Hey guys, today we're going to be setting up a Proxmox cluster. Now, if you watched my previous videos, you'll have seen that I set up uh, Proxmox on uh, two different uh, Mac minis. So I have uh, my first Proxmox instance here and my second Proxmox instance here. Now, if you want high availability, you need at least three. You can't just have two instances because, you know, when one goes down, they or, or in any case, you wouldn't be able to vote for who's the master. So, um, yeah, ultimately, if you, if you want a quorum and you want all, all of your nodes in a cluster to uh, cooperate, you're going to need at least three nodes. So in this video, we're not going to be configuring storage or replication, but we are going to be doing a live migration. I'm just going to configure a basic cluster, and then I'm going to I'm going to be configuring storage and replication and high availability on the next video. So today's video is just going to be a basic cluster, and technically we could do this with only two two nodes, but I'm actually going to configure this with three nodes because um, I'm planning ahead for the next video where I show you how to do replication and all of that stuff. That said, this third node is actually configured. This is actually Proxmox running on a VM on top of um, ver of uh, VMware. So I created a, a VM on my VMware ESXi server, and on that I installed Proxmox, which I could probably create, um, I, I could probably create VMs on that, and almost certainly um, containers and stuff. I haven't tested it, but that's what you see here. This third tab here is, um, I, I named the host Lion3, and that, that's my third Proxmox instance. Um, it doesn't have as much in terms of resources, but the whole point of it is just to have a third node for, for voting within the cluster so that the clusters can vote and break ties for when I do configure high availability. But any case, for now, all we really need are, are these first two instances. I have Lion1 and Lion2. Um, this is just how I chose to name my, my Proxmox servers. And Lion3 is the third instance here. So Lion1 and 2 are installed directly on bare metal. Um, they're running on Mac minis in my closet right now. And um, Lion3 is running on a VM. So just an interesting setup. And, um, and uh, let's jump right into it. Let's create a cluster. So to create a cluster, first thing we're going to do is go up to Data Center up here and click on Cluster. Now, we're going to click Create Cluster on our first node here, and we're going to give it a name. So um, I, I'm not, I hadn't considered creating a name yet. I haven't thought of anything, so I'm going to come up with something off the top of my head. Um, I'm, I'm going to call this Zoo, because these are like lions in a zoo. Um, let's see, Z-O-O. -O. So I'm going to call it Zoo 1, because for all I know, I may, might come up with another cluster and call it Zoo 2. But... Um, yeah, here we go. So cluster network. This is our our interface on. Uh, uh, this is the only interface on this host, anyways. So I'm just gonna hit create, and let's see here. It's creating the cluster. So it looks like it's done. Um, once we uh, close this, we see now that we have a, a new cluster called Zoo One. So um, we we only have one cluster node in this cluster so far, um, which, which is this node itself, which makes sense. So we click join information. This is going to give us some some information that we're going to copy and paste over to the other instances. So we're gonna we can just hit this copy information button, and it's going to copy everything in here. Now we can go over to Lion Two, and we're on cluster here, right? We went to data center cluster, and we can say join cluster. Now from here, we're going to just paste that info in and it fills in some things automatically for me. I actually have to fill in the password myself. Um, so let's see here. Then click join zoo. All right, finishing up, stopping PVE. All right, so it looks like that's in progress. All right, so it looks like this finished up, and we now have um, we we have now have two nodes in our cluster. I should actually zoom this in a little bit so it's easier to see. Um, I really should have done that at the beginning of this video. Now, if we go back over to our first instance here, we uh, we we can see that we we can see two hosts now, right? So we we see um, so we can actually be logged into any of these and manage the entire system from either instance. That's a, that's a little bit big. All right, I th this is about right. All right, so here we can see no VMs on this, and we can see whatever VMs are there on on our first 
instance. So let's try adding a third. So let's zoom this in so it's easier to see. And go to cluster, join cluster, paste the info in, and type the password again. and join. Now, while that goes, we can actually see it's connecting from here. This shows as red right now. And there we go, it's online. Um, we can see an event occurred right here in our uh, in our tasks list or our, our cluster log. Actually, this is, this is the cluster log right here. So we can see it was added and um, you know, we can view what's on this. Let's jump over to this tab and uh, so it doesn't say completed, it just says stopping PVE cluster service. Um, the status is, okay, so we have a connection error, but um, it's actually totally fine. Now, if we were to refresh this, it's probably gonna be completely fine. So it just wants us to log out and log back in. All right, so now we're, we're logged in from the third instance, right? And we can see all of our nodes. So we're all set up. We've just added our third node to the cluster. So let's close these. We don't need them anymore. We can do everything from here. So let's make this a little bit bigger and zoom in a little bit, which I should have done before. Um, that's a bit much. All right, let's see, let's see here. All right, this is fine, I guess. All right, so let, let's test this out. Um, let's let's take this node and um, let, let's try migrating it. So migrate, can't migrate VM with local CD, DVD. Um, migration with local disk might take a long. Okay, so we're, we're gonna have to remove the CD, DVD drive from this. Um, let's see here. There we go. Remove the media. Let's try migrating again. So we're going to migrate this over. And there we go. Look, looks like it's completed. Um, let's take a look. Looks, looks like it's just powering up right now. So if we look over here on, um, wow, look at that. So on line two, we have art test one, and it is now no longer running on, I mean, I still have my template, but the VM is completely moved off of line one and onto to line two. Now I imagine if we had replication working and if we were, were using, um, or if we were using like shared storage or something, that would move a whole lot faster, but that was still pretty neat. Um, let, let's take a look at our, our uh, server, actually. This is, a, I'm actually really curious right now. So, all right, it's a little laggy. All right, there we go. Uptime. All right, two days. Look, look at that. So apparently we did do a live migration. That that is pretty neat. I did not realize we were able to do that with local storage. So it looks like we were able to live migrate this. That that is pretty neat. So th this system has been up for two days. So it looks like it did not technically shut down or reboot at all while we moved it over. All right, so let's try another live migration test here. So I currently have, um, I'm currently logged in to our Arch server right here. 
So um, here's our VM running Arch Linux. Now let's try migrating this over and see that this stays up and running. So migrate to Lion 1. So we're going to migrate it back to the original server. So we're going to hit migrate. And we'll notice that it is, all right, we'll, we'll notice it's moving it over. So it's transferring the disk and everything. It's going to take a little while, even though it already was on that server. It's going to take a while to move it back to that server. Now, while it's transferring, the server is still up and running. So it's, it's going to stay up and running till the whole thing is transferred over. Then it's going to bring one up and the other down. So theoretically, this is a zero, zero downtime uh, live migration. And there we go. It's complete. And our system is still up and running. Obviously, the uptime is, is still two days and it didn't even log me out or anything. So we're pretty much good. No, no disconnection or anything. So it looks like, uh, yeah, that's what we get with uh, live migrations. Zero downtime. So hopefully you found that interesting and uh, hopefully you even found that useful. Um, we stay tuned because we have a lot more uh, Proxmox related stuff coming up. We're going to be doing, um, you know, we're going to be doing replication and storage and, and covering all sorts of different features and use cases. So definitely stay tuned for that. You're not going to want to miss it. Hit that subscribe button. Hit, hit the little bell icon so that YouTube actually gives you uh, an up, gives you a notification when we do come out with a new video. Otherwise, they're probably not even going to let you know. Um, also, you might want to give us a thumbs up, but more important than any of that stuff, leave a comment down below if you know something that I don't know, or if you have any questions, comments, or criticisms, whatever you want to say, I want to hear it, so do leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.